In the past, most people found it easy to justify the abuse of animals. It was believed that they were inferior creatures, without feeling or intelligence. Yet we now know that animals have astonishing abilities and that they share many of the emotions which we once thought unique to people. We know too that there is a close relationship between mother and young, that animals enjoy the company of their own species and express affection. We know that the young enjoy play, that they like to build a stable social group in which they feel comfortable and secure and that in many different ways they have extraordinary natural powers which they enjoy using. Yet, when things that make life worth living are taken away, often animals suffer the same painful emotions as we do. The unhappiness of imprisonment and loss of freedom, the boredom of confinement, loneliness and isolation. Fear, as with these monkeys, awaiting animal experimentation and depression, sometimes eventually leading to severe mental disorders when they're kept alone without hope for long periods. Above all, they share with us the capacity to feel pain. Yet, despite all the qualities which we now know to exist in animals, we continue to treat them without respect or compassion. We thoughtlessly destroy their habitat for short-term profit, causing death to millions. We humiliate them to provide cheap entertainment. We kill them to make coats from their fur. We hunt and shoot them for sport. We imprison and slaughter around a billion each year for food. And in laboratories around the world, we poison them to test chemicals, drugs, cosmetics and household products. Or give them painful diseases in medical research. It is argued that people must come first and that the misery we inflict upon other creatures is somehow necessary for our benefit. First, it is said that animals are not capable of suffering like us. And then it is argued that their suffering is somehow necessary for human life to continue. Take the argument that we need to kill farm animals to produce more meat and dairy products. Why should we care that billions of animals are killed for food when millions of people are starving? In fact, eating animal products actually reduces the amount of food available to feed people. All protein including that found in meat, originally comes from plants. The choice is whether we grow crops to feed animals, who we later eat, or whether we grow crops that humans can eat directly in a plant-based diet. The problem with meat is that it is a very inefficient way of producing food, using far more land, labor, energy, water, and feed. It has been estimated that you can feed up to 10 times more people eating vegetarian food than you can on a meat-based diet. The human population is growing all the time, and by 2050, it is predicted to reach a staggering 9 billion. With so many more mouths to feed, it is vital that we use resources as efficiently as possible and rely more upon plant-based foods. Just as animal farming is inefficient and people suffer as a result, so there is a similar argument against animal experiments. A growing number of doctors and scientists believe that animal experiments are unreliable as a guide to treating human illness. The problem is that animals are different from us in the way their bodies work and in the way they respond to drugs. As a result, animal experiments can give misleading information about how people will react to a new medicine. Nine out of ten drugs that are successfully tested on animals are found to be unsafe or ineffective when they are trialled on humans. And it works the other way around, too. Some drugs that are valuable in human medicine might have been lost if we'd relied upon animal tests. 
For example, penicillin is fatal to guinea pigs, and aspirin can poison cats and cause serious liver and kidney damage. Diseases can also take a different form in animals compared with people, as shown by AIDS. Even chimpanzees, animals with a very similar genetic makeup to us, do not suffer from fatal forms of AIDS. It was mainly thanks to medical advances based upon the study of human beings, together with public health reforms such as sewerage treatment, clean water and better housing and working conditions, that people live longer today than they did in the past. And in battling cancer, the most important breakthrough in preventing the disease came from studying people and realizing that smoking greatly increases your chance of developing the condition. It didn't come from the work of those scientists who forced animals to inhale the smoke from cigarettes. Whilst many scientists continue to use animals, there has to be a better way forward, using modern methods that give reliable results and don't cause pain and suffering to living creatures. Results from the studies of human tissue and cells can be used to discover new treatments, and computer technology can help to develop drugs. There is no logic in our attitude towards animals. We welcome dogs and cats into our families, and most people treat them with love and kindness. So imagine if it was your dog or cat used in an animal laboratory. And most of us would be disgusted by the idea of eating them for dinner. Yet pigs, cows, and other farmed animals, who are just as sensitive as dogs and cats, and could enjoy their lives just as much, are sent to slaughter while they are still very young. It is possible to put right some of the misery that humans have created for other animals, and many people are dedicating their lives to doing so. At this sanctuary, farmed animals rescued from slaughter are able to live out their lives in peace. These beagle dogs are free to enjoy companionship, exercise and fresh air. Yet in the UK alone, many thousands are bred simply to die in vivisection laboratories. We all have choices to make. Choices about whether we remain in the old world where animals are treated solely as objects to satisfy humans, or whether to live by a new ethic, based on respect and compassion for all those with whom we share the planet. You can choose whether to eat animals or to eat a meat-free diet and live a cruelty-free lifestyle. The range of vegetarian foods is increasing all the time and includes convenience foods like sausages and burgers as well as more elaborate main course options. You can choose whether to purchase cruelly manufactured products or to buy ethically produced cosmetics and household products such as washing powders and cleaners. Whether to visit places which exploit animals for entertainment or to support only those activities which rely upon human skills. You can choose whether to support medical research which involves animals or only those charities and organizations which make it a policy to use humane alternatives. You can do your bit to reduce the level of suffering and exploitation in this world, whether to people, to farmed animals, to dying forests, to endangered species, or even to animals who might seem the smallest and least significant. Their future is in your hands.